Rick Sparber here. Uh, this video is actually the culmination of two related uh, items, one of which there's been uh, uh, two videos already. Uh, the, the goal is how do you cut thin walled aluminum or thin walled tubing like this uh, that you really want to cut like this because then when the blade comes down it's cutting pretty much a uniform thickness all the way through. If you do it horizontally, you spend all your time on the top and bottom and you break teeth going down the thin sides. So the first challenge was how do I keep this at the proper angle without uh, using large V-blocks? And the answer are using these things, which I call OO blocks because a V-block on on the side face is a V, and this is two cylinders, so that must be zero, zero, or O, O. Uh, they've got little magnets on them, so I can slap them in here. And then I want to mount this so that this bottom uh, corner is right down on the vice ways. So I put it in, and I'm pressing it against that first block and that aligns it. And then the second one, I kind of get it close. And then I can slide stuff around. Okay, so I've now got my thin stock clamped. Can't clamp it too tight or you'll crush the tubing. Furthermore, these OO blocks were put together with JB Weld and not welded together. Um, that was done to provide better accessibility to people that don't have a welder. Got a welder, definitely run a bead. Um, so now the tubing is in place and bringing the blade down. Uh, if I just turn it on, it's going to still come through too fast. So here's where the second piece of the puzzle comes in. And that is to use a modified air shim. See, I've pulled off the squeeze bulb. If you see it here. And I put on here a length of rubber tubing. I think it's vacuum line from an automotive store. They do sell it by the foot. You don't need more than a foot of it. Um, and I just picked it so that it was similar in inside diameter. The, the wall thickness here is more than adequate. And the new piece is this, which I will write up and explain how you make it. But uh, by turning this, these spigots off center like that, I get more metal for the adjustment screw. And the hole uses the technique that John Herman reminded me of, which is to run a tapered tap down the hole and uh, don't run it all the way through. So when I tighten the screw down all the way, it runs into the partial thread and it does a good job of sealing it. So this simply slips in here. If, if it had, I had trouble with it popping out, I would lube this or coat it with some kind of an adhesive, but I haven't had a problem at these low pressures. So that's the whole arrangement. And then I've got this real fancy support plate. I may someday pretty that up. And it rests on that fixed jaw. Now what I do is I lower the blade down. It's right now touching the stock. And then I squeeze the bulb until the blade clears the uh, the stock right there and I've got the set screw on here uh, already adjusted so it bleeds at about the right rate and I'm gonna get this started and you can see how it's cutting but I'm not gonna bore you by having it run all the way through and you can hear the intermittent cutting that, that tells you how slowly this is coming down. It's 
just barely kissing the teeth on each pass. And there's no distortion of the uh, tubing. So it's a nice, well-controlled cut, and I don't have to stand there and hand feed it. cut on metal band so I was cutting metal so I'm not going to bore you with that but let's take a close look at the cut and you can see that it's just nice and uniform and none of the metal is distorted oh, sorry so that's all I got for now and I will write up how to make that uh, uh, bleed valve and put that in the comments section.